What's going on Genshin Impact players? Today I want to talk about something that's very important to the future of Genshin Impact, so excuse me if I sound a little down. Honestly, I'm just kind of sad. First off, I want to thank you guys for clicking on whatever clickbait thumbnail I actually give this video. I think it's really important that everyone is made aware of this and knows what's sort of going on. So within the Genshin Impact community, if you follow Twitter, that's usually where most of the news and stuff happens. There's been this article circulating that's a sort of interview with Hoyoverse, and in this interview they talk about lots of things. They talk about power creep, and they also talk about end game content just as two examples now there's a lot of people that are really excited about what they had to say in the interview but a lot of people are also very frustrated with what came at the end and unfortunately i also fall into that category and you might find that you do as well odds are if you watch this channel you are an end game genshin impact player there are lots of new genshin players who come over to my channel and thank you guys so much for watching my content and trying to learn alongside whatever i have to teach i really enjoy doing that for you guys and i'm glad that my videos can help if you are an end game genshin impact player you've probably cleared abyss or you're probably getting pretty close to clearing abyss and you probably don't have a whole lot to do once you've already finished most of your side quests your story quests all of your exploration all of those sorts of things that's usually how most live service games go if you play any mmorpgs or anything like that you'll run out of content eventually once you just play out the game but usually you'll get another patch in the future and that patch will add a lot more content and you'll be able to endlessly enjoy the game as it gets either harder or you can feel yourself progressing in power level and since it's interview a lot of people have sort of felt like Genshin Impact is doomed and a lot of people are giving up hope on Genshin Impact. So let me just tell you guys what happened. Hoyoverse was asked, currently Spiral Abyss is the only true endgame content for players at high adventurer ranks. Are there any plans to release new permanent endgame content in the same vein as Spiral Abyss? And Hoyoverse's answer was basically a big fat no. They said they will be releasing new activities to do, however not a lot of it will deal with combat and they don't want to do things like introduce other content similar to Spiral Abyss because it will give players a sense of anxiety. This kind of reminds me of the time EA did the whole pride and accomplishment thing where it just didn't really make a lot of sense and it kind of felt like the company was extremely disconnected from the player base. So let's talk about that. A lot of players are pretty dang upset about Spiral Abyss when they are unable to complete Spiral Abyss if they struggle to complete it because they have skill issue or because they haven't farmed and invested long enough or because DPS checks are going up but they're only pulling for characters that they want to pull for versus meta units. These these are all things that can lead players to not enjoy Spiral Abyss. There are also players that will only play Genshin Impact for things like story events, mini games, and exploration, which is a completely valid way to play the game. There's nothing wrong with treating this like a single player adventure game, because at its core that's sort of what it is. You create this character, you go through this interesting narrative, and at the end of the day you treat it like you would any other story game. However, there are more than just casual audiences in video games. You will know this if you play games outside of just single player games, and even in some single player games you'll see videos on YouTube of people trying to maximize character stats and things like that because it's kind of fun when a game lets you completely customize your damage capabilities your armor and abilities and and all of that sorts of stuff people really enjoy doing that it's a fun way to get more out of the game than just the main story than just the side content is to try and make your character as strong as possible and now with Genshin Impact you actually have a sort of reason to do that because you have Spiral Abyss not every single single player game has this sort of end game content that will allow you to test your damage and your characters and team comps, but Genshin Impact does. And Genshin Impact also happens to have, in my opinion, one of the best combat systems of any game I've ever played. It's simple enough that anyone can begin to understand it, but it also has so much modularity to it. It's not like every single skill reads like a Yu-Gi-Oh card and has a thousand lines of text. For the most part, everything Genshin Impact is very plug and play, and the reactions are very simple, and you can get a lot out of the game with high knowledge, but you can also have a fun time even if you don't know what you're doing. Doing. I think elemental reactions is one of the coolest things to have ever come to a game in terms of what you can get out of it, how much enjoyment you can find. And personally, I think that is my favorite part about Genshin Impact. Funny enough, if you go look at Honkai Impact, the combat's supposed to be one of the center points of the game, but the story is definitely the best part in my opinion. Whereas in Genshin Impact, I feel like combat is meant to be secondary in the eyes of the developers, but it's one of the best combat systems in any game I've ever played. And I think a lot of you guys would agree with that. And ultimately, at the end of the day, the combat system doesn't take away from the main story of the game or anything like that because it's simple enough that anyone can pick it up and enjoy it and it doesn't overall just take away from the experience. But for players who really enjoy the combat more than any other part of the game like myself, we only have Spiral Abyss. Now Spiral Abyss, once you understand the game well enough, it's kind of a cakewalk. It's a breeze. You can just blast through it with a lot of different setups. Overall, Spiral Abyss is a knowledge and investment check, but once you've done Floor 12, once you have the knowledge and once you have the characters that you want to build your team and all of that sorts of stuff, there's nothing 
nothing to do. You have the option of participating in limited time events, which can be fun sometimes if they have combat in them, at least for those of us who enjoy the combat part of the game. But if they don't have combat in them, then they're just more story stuff, which is what we're not as interested in. And I'm sure that a lot of people that sit there and enjoy the story, don't do any of the Spiral Abyss stuff, probably think the opposite. But it's really hard to classify something like that as end game content because it's constantly rotating out and requires you to do it within a certain period of time. It's more like FOMO content, like don't stop playing our game, please. We need money from investors, etc, etc. So going back to the article now, they sort of talked about anxiety in players. They're worried that introducing new end game combat related content would take away from the player experience by making their players anxious. I just want to say right now, there's only a few reasons this could happen and two of them are complete bullshit. So one of the reasons could be that let's say there's a combat based thing. It's kind of hard to do or it's like a raid and it is co-op content. You're required to do it with other people and it has primo gems at the end of it. There's going to be a pretty decent section of the community that just really doesn't want anything to do with that. There's going to be a section of the community that just really wants to avoid doing co-op of any sort. And that's totally fine. The same way there's an entire section of the community that wants to avoid the story. But I can understand the worry of FOMO of not getting the primo gems at the end of the game. But in my opinion, I feel like that's sort of a shallow way to look at things. The idea that someone else gets more rewards than you as a result of directly doing more work than you is a completely fair and valid concept. And that's why certain people will be getting more primo gems out of events because a lot of the people that just want to do combat don't do the non-combat events unless they're free to play and need to save up those primos. Now I do sympathize this is a gotcha game and resources are everything, but I don't feel like that's a fair reason to try to take away from people's fun. There are even instances where you can actually find these in my other videos. I made one about PvP and one about raids. There have been instances where people will not want something added to the game just because the idea of someone enjoying it, even if there are zero rewards attached, there could be, you could get nothing from doing this. Like what if they just added like another combat trial that gave you a sort of score at the end of it that did absolutely nothing. There are people that are still against that idea and I genuinely don't get it. If somebody can explain why other people having fun causes you so many problems, I am all ears. I really have yet to hear one solid argument for that. The only thing I could think of is potentially locking more primos or something behind the content and like I kind of get it but still they lock primo gems behind quest lines and we do the quest lines anyways even though they take like six hours of our time. It's incredibly one-sided and honestly kind of hypocritical. Let me tell you why Hoyaverse is being hypocritical about this because when Hoyaverse first started Genshin Impact they said in an interview that they want the content in their game to be the characters. They want the characters kits, their designs, and their stories to be a main core part of their games and be the content that they are producing and selling. And that's why all of the characters have so much work put into them. But for those of us who want to enjoy the characters beyond just that of the story, for those of us who want to take them past the absolute lowest, most basic level, all we have is Spiral Abyss. And Spiral Abyss not only gets incredibly repetitive and stale, but it also is catered to very specific characters coming out every single patch. They are trying to sell you the new on banner characters using the Abyss ley lines to help you get through the content by swiping. And that's always how this game's model has been. There is clearly a very high combat focus in the game. They just really don't want to add more content to Genshin. They actually don't want you playing the game that much. And the reason for that is actually pretty simple too. And I absolutely hate it. You may or may not know that uh, Hoyaverse has so many different games. They have Honkai Star Rail coming out. They have Zenless Zone Zero coming out in a couple years probably. They have Honkai Impact 3rd, which is their baby. They had an FPS in the works. I don't know if it still is. I've heard mixed things on that. And then they also have Genshin Impact. And very clearly, they're trying to sell their other games as well. They want their other games to be as successful as Genshin, but none have hit quite as hard. And that's because Genshin Impact is a masterpiece. The combat system is immaculate. The story is, in my opinion, pretty good. I think that uh, Inazuma was kind of a miss for me personally, but that doesn't really matter in the context of this. The game overall is amazing and caters to so many different kinds of people. And all of the other games that they're producing are a little more niche. You have a turn-based strategy game in Honkai Star Rail. You have a combo fighting game in Honkai Impact 3rd. And Zenless Zone Zero is a roguelike. Now, if you play any of the other Hoyoverse games, you'll know that these games all have different events going on just like non-stop throughout them. Sort of like how Genshin Impact has all of the events going on and Honkai Impact has all the events. And these events take up a lot of your time and energy. I talked recently on stream about burnout and I think that limited time events burn people out very quickly. One thing that's become very clear is that Hoyoverse wants Genshin Impact to be successful, but they don't like Genshin Impact as much as they care for their other IPs. They want all of the Genshin Impact players to also try their other games. They know that they're making good games. Honestly, I think all the other games they've made are pretty good so far, but people 
are obsessed with Genshin Impact. It's a worldwide phenomenon. So many people love this game and so many people will only play this game. For a lot of people, this is their very first game they've ever played and it's their only one. And HoYoverse wants to get you involved in all of their other titles so that way they can get loyal customers, uh, but also just because they want higher player bases. You may notice that because everything is time gated in Genshin and because things don't like respawn in the overworld aside from overworld enemies really, there's not a lot of repeatable content in Genshin. You have your farming for characters, but that gets stale really fast. Artifact farming can also get stale pretty fast, especially if you just have a really dry streak of bad luck. And Spiral Abyss is, you know, once you've done it, you've done it. Unless you're someone like Zajef and you enjoy actually beating your head against a wall trying to discover new things in Spiral Abyss for 18 hours a day, there's not a whole lot to do. And ultimately, it feels like there's not a lot to do and they're not going to add more to do because they want you to play their other games. From a business standpoint, this makes the most sense to me. I've heard people say it's because of China's limited playtime and I feel like that argument could make sense. You know, if you added a whole bunch of end game content to Genshin Impact and they weren't able to complete all of it daily, that would be fair because a lot of what they do caters to their CN audience. But why would they care about how much you play Genshin a day? Well, it's because they want you to play the other games as well. If you're spending your entire day on Genshin Impact enjoying end game content, challenging yourself, challenging others, doing things like PvP, doing raids, or they're just adding more end game content in general, then it's taking away from your time to spend on their other games that also all have FOMO events going on at the same time. Which also doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Like, why are you making every single one of your games have limited time events that are that have such amazing rewards that like you absolutely can't miss? Hoyoverse's entire business model runs on fear of missing out. And a lot of other game companies do this as well. By the way, fear of missing out is FOMO. I've been saying FOMO the entire video, so apologies for not clearing that up earlier. Gotcha is a FOMO mechanic. The idea that you might miss the character that you want to get. Limited time events, anything that resets on a daily or weekly basis is a FOMO mechanic, something that you don't want to miss because if you do, you'll be missing out on some sort of progression system. So what feels super hypocritical to me is the idea that they don't want to give their players anxiety about having new endgame content to complete when their 50-50 is anxiety, when all of their limited time events are anxiety, when even Spiral Abyss itself is anxiety. Like, clearly anxiety is not the issue. Clearly there's an ulterior motive from the company, and you can say whatever you want about Hoyoverse. That's not really the point of the video. I guess the point of the video is that it's just really upsetting that we've gotten this far into Genshin Impact, hoping that there would be some sort of future content for us to use our characters on. If you're this far in, if you're in the end game, if you're at the point of the game where I'm at as well, you're probably pretty okay with Spiral Abyss, but you probably don't want to just keep doing it. I'm sure many of us are even just capping resin nowadays. There's no point in building characters and farming artifacts all the damn time if there's nothing to use them in. We do have Spiral Abyss to use them in, but then what? What's our motive? When you can beat Spiral Abyss, what's the point in progressing the game? What's the point in continuing to play? And this is why a lot of people are losing faith in Genshin Impact, why a lot of people are probably going to not be playing as much anymore, and ultimately, I'm pretty dang sad that this is the direction they've chosen to go with. It may seem really one-sided, it may seem like I'm only advocating for endgame content for one side of the coin, but ultimately endgame content hurts no one, and if you're a non-combat-based player, if you're only there for exploration, and only there for quests, you're already getting new content in every single patch. My one request for you guys this video is to be kind to each other, even if you disagree with any of what I had to say in the video, even if you hate the idea of endgame content for some reason, be kind to each other. If this video seems unscripted and all over the place, it's because it is. I haven't even finished moving in yet, but I broke out my microphone just to make this video. So anyways, guys, I hope you have a wonderful week and thanks for watching. See ya.